The main weather headline remains the same as we enter the final week of May, which is active thunderstorms and persistent flood threats. But despite the fact that we're going to see more of the same as we go through this week, I do expect some slight changes in the weather pattern, therefore having an impact on who sees the strongest storms and the heaviest rain. I have all the latest information prepared for you in the following weather report, so let's get straight into it. We're going to start off today with something I usually save for the end of the video. On this edition of Photo of the Day, we have this really impressive image of a lightning bolt sent in by Aerospot in Serbia from some thunderstorms in the area back on May 21st. I thought this photo was a great one to feature, especially since it sets the tone for what we're going to discuss in greater detail in this video, so special thanks to Aerospot for submitting this picture. In other news, NOAA released its official 2024 Atlantic hurricane season forecast on May 23rd. This video won't be focusing on hurricanes, of course, but I did want to bring that up since the likelihood of a potentially extraordinary hurricane season continues to rise. All of the conditions that hurricanes need to develop, such as decreased wind shear and very warm ocean temperatures, will be in play, which has driven the most aggressive hurricane season forecast ever created by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. If you would like to know more about this, I highly recommend taking a look at my preliminary hurricane season outlook which I published back in early February. And additionally, I'd like to announce that my official hurricane season forecast is in production, so make sure you look out for that if you're interested. One of the biggest factors playing into the persistent thunderstorm activity, especially across the more western, central, and southern portions of Europe, is a series of large high-pressure systems which have been established across the Nordic countries into western Russia basically acting as a barrier. Obviously, there's been some interludes of lower pressure as these anticyclones weaken and shift, but generally speaking, we've seen much more high pressure across that region rather than lower pressure. The area of high pressure located over western Russia was actually over the Nordic countries a few days ago, and since then it has moved further south and east, it has weakened, and is now being joined by another anticyclone moving in. Not only is this allowing for lower pressure to make a comeback, but the clockwise flow around the anticyclone is helping pull rain and storms up into Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Looking towards the Atlantic, you'll quickly notice a new storm system closing in, and as it does move inland, more unwanted precipitation will move into portions of Central Europe. As if this wasn't enough, focus on that area of low pressure over Turkey. It's going to remain nearly stationary for a little while longer, so if you live in southeastern Europe into portions of the Middle East, this is currently the reason why it's been pretty stormy across the region. But here's the interesting part. Remember those high pressure systems located further north and east over Russia? Well, they still haven't gone anywhere. In fact, it's quite possible that the strong clockwise flow could eventually push this cutoff flow westward, causing it to drift into the Balkans throughout the week, maybe even moving as far north as the Baltic countries by Thursday and Friday. This will feed even more moisture and thunderstorm fuel, especially into Eastern Europe, as the high-pressure system loses dominance. Atlantic moisture will keep all of Ireland and the United Kingdom occasionally wet through the end of the month, with areas across Eastern Europe seeing mostly sporadic and light rainfall, but of course any areas that are impacted by heavy thunderstorms could see locally heavier amounts. Most of Iberia and the Canary Islands into northern Africa will be mostly dry, but that's pretty normal heading into the summer months. Now where we do see the heaviest rain is right in that corridor from the Adriatic Sea all the way up into Norway. Many of those areas, primarily from Germany into Italy, have taken the brunt of thunderstorms and rainfall throughout this month, and unfortunately it looks like this overall trend will continue. Regarding Scandinavia, Southern Norway is most likely going to be the most heavily affected area, at least by the amounts of precipitation in this time frame, which can be attributed to the weather pattern change we've discussed throughout this video. As we go forward, the details on specific severe weather and flood threats on a day-to-day -day basis will become more clear, so I'll be sure to provide more updates when they're necessary. As I film this video late Sunday afternoon, Many areas that were expecting thunderstorms are already getting them. As you can see, we have some pretty healthy looking storms from Albania all the way up into the Nordic countries, and you can see how that corresponds with the level 2 risk areas on my severe weather outlook. As far as the flood threat goes, that can be expected in areas shaded in green, and I've outlined it in red to make them easier to see. On Monday, the system from the Atlantic is going to really fuel the severe weather threat across Scandinavia, so be on the lookout for a widespread thunderstorm outbreak, possibly including some severe weather, all the way down towards Poland, Germany, and the Balkans. 
Flooding rainfall will be possible in many areas that do experience thunderstorms, such as the Alps into Norway, far northern portions of the Nordic countries, and more. The severe weather outlook for Tuesday looks pretty similar to the day before, but the main difference is that level 1 I added right around Romania and Moldova, and that's because of that low pressure system which I said would slowly drift into the region throughout the week. Once we get past this point and reach the middle of the week, another Atlantic storm will rapidly spread into Europe, bringing widespread rainfall from France to Norway. This system won't really bring much of a thunderstorm risk to Western Europe initially, so this is right around the point where I expect the severe weather threats to start being more confined towards the east, as you can clearly see on this map. By Thursday, I think we might see at least a low severe threat try to head back west, especially around Germany, but once again the most significant and widespread severe weather potential is going to be across Eastern Europe. Now to bring this all to a close, let's move on to my 7-day precipitation outlook. Drier than average conditions are expected for most of Europe, with really the only area seeing above average precipitation being parts of the Middle East, as well as that corridor from the Balkans to Norway. This resembles what we saw on the precipitation accumulation map earlier. I think that's going to be all for today's forecast, so as always, make sure you subscribe for more videos if you're new to the channel, and consider leaving a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next forecast.